right, so today's Saturday, um, and this is the, the last day, and I'm going home. Um, it was tough uh, because I just focus so much on caribou sometimes. Um, it's tough when I don't get one. And, you know, I'm trying to look at a lot of the other positive things that basically came out um, of this trip. Uh, first thing that I can say is that we got to explore every nook and cranny, every inch of the Taylor Highway, um, which we didn't do before. And I actually kind of was laughing about the fact that you know, we came up here in a long weekend and I got one and we didn't discover hardly anything um, other than what was basically right next to camp. Um, and so, you know, I was like, okay, well, that actually doesn't do a lot for laying groundwork for future hunts at all. Um, you know, and it was kind of like, <laughs> we, we suffered from success, you know what I mean? We kind of jokingly said that uh, around the campfire a few times, you know, like, man, I wish we had um, spent more time hunting last year and had to, you know, kind of suffer more about it because then that would have for forced us to learn and explore more out here. Um, I think that's, I think that's one of the biggest things is it's like, all right, well, this time we did, um, this time we really did, you know, suffer through not getting one, um, you know, with so many days out here and everything. Um, the number one thing that we learned um, was to not come here unless the caribou are here. And I know that's, you know, that sounds kind of obvious in a way, um, but it's also a matter of, uh, a matter of truth as far as it goes, because fish and game um, literally tells you uh, where the caribou are um, with a decent amount of accuracy um, as far as the main body of the herd and um, their movements. So this whole time we've been in zone three and um, we're waiting for them to come over from zone two. And last year, I don't even really remember calling the hotline other than to just hear that the hunt was still open because once they meet their quota, it's closed. So I was like, all right, it's still open, let's go. You know, and like, honestly, I mean, that's, that's, not, that's not great as far as like, uh, knowing how the system works and you know what's best for the future and you know where to go for the best hunts and you know best chances of success and so forth so I definitely say that I learned a lot and I was like all right well in the future what I'm gonna do is I'm going to call the hotline and guess what if they're not where I can get to them then I'm gonna um, push my time off at work I'm just gonna wait at home I'm not gonna go um, until they're actually on the move through this zone and actually heading into Canada um, because it is a migration. Now, last year, and we wouldn't have learned this and we wouldn't have been you know, forced to you know, learn and everything if it hadn't been for you know, sitting down and not getting caribou for a whole week. But last year, there was a fire over in zone two and when they, when the caribou went through, they didn't spend a lot of time there because there wasn't a lot of vegetation to eat. Then it makes sense. Um, so they kind of blasted through and then came into this zone and then on their way to Canada, which is literally less than 20 miles from where I am right now. Um, so this year, because there was no fire and the vegetation has recovered, they're like, well, why would I leave right now until we've ate basically all the good stuff to eat and fattened up more for the winter. So last year was kind of an oddity as far as that goes and now we know that. And now we know more about caribou, we know more about this area. Um, and honestly, you know, another big thing was is that we talked to, we talked to one group of people last year and they were the ones that had camp right next to us. We really didn't venture out far as far as meeting friends and everything goes. This year, I got a stack of numbers. Um, I know uh, people all over the state now and met a few people that came in from uh, out of the state, came up from the lower 48. 
And, <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, like we didn't meet a fraction of this many people and make as many connections and learn as much about, um, you know, the, the peripheral things that happen around hunting uh, last year that we have this year. So, I mean, as far as like learning the, the additional things, the outside stuff, not just about hunting, but everything else around it, we're, we're starting to learn a lot more. I got to learn a ton and um, I don't take that for granted at all. Um, I got to test a lot of things out, which is really important to me because I have some really high stakes um, hunts and things in the future. Um, the, the Arctic hunt is mostly what I'm talking about. And um, one of the biggest things that I've been trying to deal with was um, electricity. I have a few items that I need to keep uh, charged, mostly my GPS. It's nice to have like my watch charged and I'd like to have, you know, not have to get, you know, 20 batteries <laughs> worth of, uh, you know, GoPro batteries and everything to keep the, keep the videos coming and everything. Um, and it's nice to have my phone too because I can um, drop pins and maps and things like that as far as locations and help me navigate and everything else. Um, so that's that's one actually one of the biggest things that I that I managed to get uh, tested and that was this was great. I you know it was lucky. I'm still happy about this. It's charging my GPS right now, um, and I've not even used half of the battery. Uh, that's available on that one like a half the power that's available on that one battery and um, That was that was my father-in-law that actually uh, Found that for me, which was a huge help. Thanks dad um, <laughs> But uh, I got to test some of the stuff out like that, you know, which really makes me happy to know like oh wow That's great. You know that works really well um, There wasn't a lot of uh, restrictions on um, weight and things for this trip that I'm gonna have on my next trip and it was kind of nice to see just one last time before um, before we go to the Arctic okay what do I actually need how many changes of socks do I really need you know like are my feet really gonna get that wet that I need to change them twice a day sort of thing you know and you know just kind of get realistic about a few of those last items um, emotionally, this was kind of a tough trip. Um, it was really hard to sit here in the cold and the rain and the dew soaking everything every morning. Um, the humidity being so high and still being so cold here and not seeing a lot of stuff. And, you know, bringing people out that I kind of felt uh, responsible for and I felt responsible for their hunt and the success of their hunt. You know, so emotionally it was like, this was really tough. This was a tough one to, to go through and spend this much time away from my family uh, to come out and do, you know. Um, my, my wife was very supportive the whole time. Um, every time I'd message her and say, you know, like, damn, you know, is this, is this just a waste and what am I doing here? And, you know, she was always sending good vibes and everything else. So. You know, I think I think that's an important element of it all too. A really important element is that you know you make sure that things are uh, squared away the way they ought to be, um, and have the support that you need to come out and do these sorts of things, um, to come out and adventure out here. So um, <laughs> now the plan is to uh, drive off the Taylor Highway and get back on the Alcan and uh, drive over to Toke, get one last meal um, <laughs> before we drive the rest of the way home, um, which all in all, it's gonna be like eight and a half hours of driving, roughly, you know, depending on how fast you go here and there. Um, it's, it's tough, I'm driving on the Taylor Highway right now, and you know, it's, it's pretty rough. I'm doing 30 miles per hour. <laughs> on a highway <laughs> which is like well that's that's good driving for you know an Alaskan highway um, yeah so I just wanted to say you know thanks for watching thanks for hanging in there and if it was if it was tough for you just imagine you know uh, how tough it is for me <laughs> now um, one other thing that we had time to do that we wouldn't have had time to do uh, if we had been busy with caribou 
was um, that we talked about the Arctic and going up there and things that we want to do and the equipment that we want to bring and um, potentially maybe if they're here in two weeks coming back up here and um, trying to get one uh, before we go before we go into the Arctic and so I'm like man I don't know maybe I'm just maybe I'm just done with the Taylor Highway maybe I'm just done with the 40 mile um, hunt you know um, but it's something that we talked about and um, you know stay tuned as far as that goes um, look forward to the future when maybe we get we get our revenge you know from the White Mountains <laughs> and we're able to finally get what we came for um, before we go up into the cold and the dark uh, that and the beauty and the beauty that's available up there too um, yeah so wish me luck that uh, I get to go and keep having these adventures that I keep holding my head high and that maybe we get some caribou here in the future because uh, the freezer is starting to run out of caribou.